what he will say to me. Bible said that they that wait upon the Lord shall do what? They shall renew their strength. I wake up in the morning waiting on the Lord to see what he will say to me concerning this meeting in addition to all he has said to me before now. And my ears were filled with instructions. I think I'm one of the people that came early to the church. Many of you have chosen to come so late. And when you come, the time you come, sometimes you want us to stay here. I'd like to please say to you, do all you can to be punctual to the church. Respect the time of appointment we have with God. It will help you. It will help your fulfillment in God's plan. All right, I want to quickly thank those of you who has given your obedience to the teaching of this altar, to the instructions of this altar, and please realigning yourself that this year, I'm not just going to hear God come to church. I am going to be a doer of the demand of the word of God. That is actually what matters. Until you and I start doing the word of God, we will never live in the will and in the plans of God. Family is a very strong institution. One of the first institutions that God gave birth to. Above all creation, the oceans, the waters, the trees, the treasures of oil, gold, silver, everything you can see on the earth that God created. The most important in the heart of God is family. When the family misses it, there will be a lot of mixing, discouragement, and mishap. God is interested in his family. He's interested in his church. And this first Sunday of March, I am led to talk about family. Those of you should be able to connect this message. If you are not married, you are, in fact, very privileged to listen to this message. Maybe that's why God has delayed you. If you're married, this message will not be condemning you, but will be placing a demand for you to make a shift, an adjustment. Find those things you are doing right and continue to do them right and find those things that you are doing wrong and correct yourself before you go to heaven. Praise God. You know that everybody will go to heaven. As, especially as far as this house is concerned. My greatest prayer is that even if you miss anything on the earth, if you miss riding the car of your dream, if you miss living in the building of your dream, may you never miss heaven. Yeah. Praise God. Because in heaven, you don't need a car, you don't need a plane. Everything is available for everyone. And you just live in the comfort of God. No electricity, no heat, nothing. And the Bible says we'll be there for a long time. And thereafter, we'll come back with Jesus to reign for 1,000 years. Where Jesus will be the head of government. Come on, somebody. I wonder how that time will be. You will not have President Tunumbu or President Buhari there. God will be the president. Everything will be orderly. So endure what you are passing through now. Because what is coming for you will wipe away the pain of what you are passing through now. Can I say to you, many people in Nigeria will go to hell at this time. Families are full of complaint. Women will misbehave. They will complain of everything as if they are a stranger in the land. Did you get that message? They complain. Complain of virtually everything. The men themselves will also lose their head sheep. They will complain as if the woman you married is an accident in your life. So I'm going to show you a way out as you pass through this season. The past two Sundays have been a season. My prayer is that hold your marriage and don't break it. This season will pass away. You are not saying amen. If you don't say amen, you are a suspect. There's nothing happening now that is new. 
All right, so I want to talk about family values. Family values. And um, I have a literal definition. I think I want to stay on the topic as quickly as I can. Thereafter, we shall pray. Is somebody here? Now, when we talk about family value, we talk about an agreed principles. Agreed principle. An intentional principle that the husband and the wife who owns the family has come to agree that this is how our family will go. Are we here? It's also an agreed culture, a pattern of life that they have agreed. Anything that has no pattern has no value. If a family has no pattern, we don't know the time the door is open. We don't know the time the door is locked. We don't know whether the kitchen is locked. We don't know whether night has come. Nobody gathered together to pray. That is a family that has no pattern. The Bible says in those days there was no king in Israel. And everybody was tempted to do what he pleases. When we have a land and a house... Where there's no law and rule, that is a home waiting for a disaster. If God has given us a rule, and if God has given birth to a family, every family must have a pattern, and every family must have a rule. And if we're able to cultivate, build our families, we can create our future. Are you ready for me? Or I should close. All right. So that's my definition. A set of principles or culture agreed by members of the family by which they will live their life and build their home. That is called family value. I'll be talking about almost so many factors that is tied to it. Then let's look at the foundation of family value. The foundation of family value. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4. Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, from verse 9. Are you there? Two are better than one because they have a good reward. For their labor. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. Two are better than one. This is the word of God. Tap your neighbor say two are better than one. So when you've been single. And suddenly dream of marrying. God is advancing you. Progressing you. To make a better success. Not to frustrate you. Marriage is not designed to frustrate you. Marriage is designed to add to you. Can I hear someone say, my marriage is good? Are you saying here? The next verse. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. The one will lift up his fellow. Don't marry a man or a woman. There are a lot of things here. Because all is well with him or her. Marry a man or a woman because there is a, a law from the inside. It is called agape law. A law that is not conditioned to anything. People like me, we are privileged to marry. We are, my wife had no money, I had no money. So why are we marrying? I think there is love. Praise God. And... In the course of time, God began to see our necessity and begin to raise us to where we are. So I think we can be a good model for you to study. When you jump into marriage because of material motivation, I tell you, you have just simply taken a risk. What will happen when that material motivation is no longer there? Will you still be married? So for two but if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. They woe to him that is alone. When he falleth, for he had not another to help him. May you never be in marriage as if you are not in marriage. 
Answer me. Yeah. Let your amen get to the roof. Yeah. Somebody told me one day, say, marriage is hard labor. I said, marriage is hard labor. How? He wrote a book and he asked me to edit the book. And I read the book. And the title is, Marriage is Hard Labor. And I told him, sir, go and review your book. Because your title cannot sell. The Bible says that, the Bible did not say that marriage is hard labor. The Bible said that marriage is good. Somebody are you here? And he that thinks of marriage thinks of what? If there's hardness in marriage, it's simply important. Everything wrong in marriage is what someone in the marriage has imported into it. So if it's not working as it should work, you are the one who has imported something strange into what God had designed. Consider this meeting as a school of marriage. Because I will talk to you this morning. And by the grace of God, your heart will be healed. And you will know that there's no problem with your marriage. It's just like Nigeria. If you ask me, what's wrong with Nigeria? I say nothing. There's no problem wrong with Nigeria. Because I've gone around. We are the only nation that has organic economy. Organic economy. You will only suffer here and die here if you are lazy. And the only problem in Nigeria is leadership. Leadership. And the set of cabas who wake up to grab the, the seat of power and they are not able to control the economy. You can imagine one person stealing trillions of naira and storing it in a warehouse. He has lost his mind. Four years ago, somebody bought a lot of money, put them in a bag, buried them on the ground. By the time he went there, the, the um, tarmac has eaten all the money. Like, likewise, there's nothing wrong in some of our homes. The problem in some of our homes is we. We that live in that home. We. When a man wants to be the head of the home, but he does not want God to be his head, the home will not stand. Except you are laid, you are not fit to lead anything. I'm not going to tell you anything of mine. I am going to tell you the word of God. The Bible said that God is the head of the man. And as long as the man understands that God is his head, and the discipline enough to do the will and things of God, he is not qualified to say he's the head of his home. It becomes traditional. They thank God that you are a Christian. I will say here. Say one, let it be fallet. Woe to him that is alone when he fallet. But he had not another to help him up. Listen to me. You will not remain down. After this meeting, the hand of God will come upon your home. No matter the status of your home. Because it's a God. To what would have destroyed man or finished man? I will sit here together. The next verse. When there is marriage and God is involved in the marriage, there will be the third party in the marriage or call the fourth man in the sin, call God. Because a marriage is a covenant. A covenant is like a triangle. A triangle is drawn like this and then with a bar on there. God on top, the man on the left, I mean the woman on the left and the man on the right. Come on, are we here? Now, the Bible is saying here that 
two are better than one. So if you are succeeding when you are single, and you've done well when you are single, and you got married, you are expected to be better. When a young man decides to marry, they call him that this man had decided to become responsible. It means that when a young man is of age to marry and is not married, he's irresponsible. So marriage is designed for responsible men, responsible women. Marriage is not for boys and girls. Marriage is for a man and a woman. And the meaning of the word man and woman are men and women that are mature. Are we here? That thoughts of maturity. Ability to take decision, stand by your decision, defend your decision, and preserve your decision. You, you are not expected to be a baby that is tossed, tossed up and down in marriage. You should be able to know where you are going. Now, let's settle down and sit up. Sit up, put on your seatbelt. And let's come to the Bible, Genesis chapter 2. I was rushing because I needed more time to talk to you. We thank God for all that has happened today with us. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 18. Verse 18. Are you there? And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. It's not good that the man should be alone. Is it in your Bible? I will make him and help meet for him. I will make him and help meet for him. I don't know your motive of looking for a wife or a man. In my book, Biblical Marriage Concept, childbearing is the sixth factor in marriage. Sixth is not the first. In Africa, childbearing is number one. And that's why men go out to marry as much women as they can so that they will have enough support in their farm. Did you marry the woman to help you in your farm? There's something more than farming. Farming now can be investment. God says it's not good that a man should be alone. When we define the word loneliness, it means a lot of things. It reminds us about missing relationship. It reminds us about missing support. It reminds us about connectivity for productive life. I don't want any one of you to sleep. If you do, I will ask the usher to keep you standing. You can't come to a church and just in one minute you are sleeping. Praise God. Now, go to verse 22, 21. It's not good for a man to be alone. I expected that God would have created a woman the way he made the first man. Are we here? But look at what happened here. Verse 21. Is everybody there? One, two, can we read together? And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. Let's repeat it. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs. He meant that he had several ribs. And close it up and close up the flesh instead thereof. Verse 22. Look at the drama here. And the reed which the Lord had taken from the man made he a woe man. 
and brought her unto the man. 23. And Adam, this, and Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. It shall be called. Come on, shout it. Shout it. Because she was taken out of man. It shall be called what? This was the original name of the woman. This name changed after the fall. When it became Eve. May your name not change. So let's come back to my note now. And let's take some things here. The man was God's original project. If you are a man here, can I see your hand up? Look at yourself. Just rise up and look at yourself from head to toe. If you can see your head. If you are a man, rise to your feet. If you are a boy, sit down. I'm talking about men now. Praise God. In this Bible definition, the man is God's original project. So the man is God's idea. God never thought of bringing in a woman. Are you here? Mothers understand me. Because in the beginning, God only made a man. Now, Number two, the man is God's original plan. Original plan. He was God's master plate. God was simply duplicating himself. So he wanted something that looked like himself. Strong as he is. Capable as he's capable. He made the man with seven shock observer. Many of you that deal with spare parts understand what I'm talking about. Many of you that have car understand what I'm A car has four shock. But man is made with how many? Seven. You know, the intestines, the kidney, the, the bowels, everything there, they hang on the rib to be able to stand. Praise God. And the rib protect them. So that nothing have access to attack it. They are the life wire of man. You have Mike said that the father is living with a new intestine. Right? That's just a kind of a creative force. Now, to create the woman to terminate the loneliness in the man, which is the problem the man had, God has to visit the man. So if the woman must exist and be healthy and fulfill his destiny, he must be connected to a man. Listen, if God made you a woman and you feel you want to be a man, you, you will kill yourself very fast. You, you can't shift a supernatural position. You can't shift it. Every attempt to shift it will be disastrous. Look at the passage. Remain standing because you are a man. You have strength to be a man. Praise God. Are we still here? The man is God's representative, not the woman. Look at it. When the garden, the law of the garden was breached and Eve violated God's order, who did God ask? Why did he not ask Eve? Eve was not accountable to God. He cannot have access to God. Understand this. He can't have access to God. That's why the man, God is the head of the man and and the man is the head of the woman in original context. God did not create the man to be answerable to courtesy. 
traditions and culture. God created the man for himself. So when the man is in God, understand me, oh, when the man is in God, he's supposed to be God to the house. A covering to the house. He, he exerts a responsibility just like God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever that believeth in him shall what? They have everlasting life. Now listen, what this implies is that the man, which is God man, God kind of man now, have no right to hate anything in his house if he has what it takes to keep the laws of God. You will take your wife the way your wife is and take your wife as your assignment. Are we here? You take your wife as your responsibility. In my place, it is said that after parents are trained the child, the husbands continue from where the parents stops. Women never graduate. If you want that to graduate, you will kill yourself. I'm sorry. But that is truth. Women will always be like women. Why? They are so weak. They are made weak. Okay? Have you ever seen a, a, a he goat and a female goat? Eh? The female goat is full of fat. And he goat can harass her anytime, anyhow. That's the way it is. The women are full of fats. They're so weak. They have only one rib. And that rib is covered by fat. But the man still has six ribs. And sometimes the man wants the woman to be like him. It's not possible. You may ask me some questions. But what of, what of the, the women that used to beat their, their wife, their man? Praise God. One, that's unscriptural, you know. But that woman is a strange woman. Any woman who beats the, the husband is a strange woman. He has another spirit. <laughs> from, a, from somewhere. Come out here. Don't ask our mothers, so I respect our mothers. But I'm just trying to put some things here because every one of us are feeling our responsibility. A friend called me and they said, I am quitting this marriage. And I said, Thank, thank God you called me. And I asked him a few questions. He answered me. I asked him another question. He answered me. I won't tell you. I asked him another question. He answered me. And then. Um, he now said, Apostle is enough. You carry so, so much power. power. If, if you know this dead I was when I called you, because you told me my eye open, I'm, I'm going, going to apologize, apologize to my wife. wife. When a man refuses to be a man, the woman will never be a woman. Everything in the home begins with the man. Are you here? Those of you that that's why, that's why I say, those of you that have not yet married, you are lucky to be here today. And those of you who I guess, you may be seated now, thank you. Those of you who I guess, may God give you a God man as a husband. What, what did I, I say to, to him? him? I, I said, said to him, anyone, anyone who misses it, there are exemptions that sometimes I want to be careful what I'm saying that sometimes some things will be allowed by God and God himself will repay it. But I tell you, we that are in the Lord supposed to live like prisoners of the Lord. We have been apprehended. The man will be accountable to God over himself, over his wife, and over his house. I fear when I look at the Bible, Adam has misbehaved. I mean, Eve has misbehaved. Adam told him, Don't do this. God said we shouldn't do this. God said we shouldn't do this. And he went out 
And he went to the, under the tree and stood there. And the devil came and met him, met her there. I was asking her, ah, the Lord said you shouldn't touch this tree. He said, yes, yeah. said, what did the Lord say? He said, the Lord said, the day we eat on this tree, that day we die. Unfortunately, he took it. And he took it home. And, I mean, he took it to the bedroom and gave it to the husband. Genesis 3, 6. The husband was at home. He couldn't protect her. I don't know for how long. Sometimes I put a call to my wife, where are you? Sometimes he will tell me, I'm in the market. Did you tell me you're going to market today? Or you do fast and go home? Praise God. If he has told me he's going to market, I may have said, don't go. So he will intentionally want, want to, to do, do that. that. As, as a man, man she, she has a reason, reason to go to, to market. market. Come on out here. You don't take it as a violation. She has to cook. She knows what is lacking. She knows what is necessary. So a man should be able to have a sense of value. A sense of leadership. A sense of management. You have to be like God. Look at the whole Bible. Look at all violations. Did God lose his mind? Did God cause anything? One time God only took a decision. The Bible says, and he repented God. That he created man. And God said, I will destroy all. So that let me make something new. Sometimes when people die in marriage prematurely, it's because of their violation of God's intention. The fact that it was wrong does not make it right. God only allowed it by his mercies. But those of us that are alive now, looking at these things, we have to wake up very fast. So, this morning, look at what God told me about the woman. Who is this woman? Look at it. God caused a deep sleep in the man and took a read in order to make the woman out. So, without the man, the woman never would have existed. True of us? Is that correct? So, who is a woman by definition? From my note, a woman is a divine supplement. You didn't hear me. You know what supplement means. What is supplement? Supplement is some things you take to refresh your body. Who is a woman? Shout it like you know it. Have you ever heard the word before? It was born. A woman is a divine supplement. Supplement does not cure. Supplement nourishes. It brings comfort. It brings joy. It brings peace. A woman is such a figure that when the man sees, even if he's feeling so bad, he becomes happy. That's God's intention. The Bible said the man was sad. And when he saw the woman, he screamed. And he said, this looks like me. It's the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. It shall not be called. That's why marriages are celebrated. He that findeth a wife. What's the Bible passage? And does what? And qualify for favor. Mothers, you're supposed to be a supplement and not a bitter leaf. When you miss it and you make life bitter and unbearable in your house, you have lost your status. Go home and be a supplement to that home. So that the messages everybody is taking and the food they're eating will work in their body. Maybe you will be singing a song, I'm a divine supplement. When the man wants to write, tell him, I am your divine supplement. Have you ever imagined the sucking and the giving of breast? That supplement. From the child. I tell somebody, I say, your wife, your husband is your first son. 
And I tell another person, when the man refused to be a man, you'll be both a wife and a mother to him. The relation of family values. Every wife should have a knowing of a button to press on the man. Are you see here? Are you see here? So the woman is what? To boost the man. To complete the man. A woman is like a transplanted heart. Have you ever heard about a transplanted heart? Yeah? When somebody's heart is failing, they will ask call for transplant. When you take some, uh, so, somebody's heart to put in another person, it doesn't work very perfectly. The person is likely to start behaving very strange. Is that correct? And after a while, the blood system will synchronize. And then things will be harmonized. God took a read from the man in order to create the woman. So the woman is just a transplanted vessel. Okay? Attached to the man. It has no original bearing from God. That's where I saw the woman. I'm sure I'm not violating you. So the woman was never in God's original plan. No matter the role you play in the house, you are a supplement. You are planted in that home to complete the purpose and plan of God for that home. You can never take the glory of the home. Otherwise, you will miss God. So what does this mean? The man has a role and the woman has a role. When the man plays his role according to the Bible and the woman plays his role according to the Bible, there will be a home. But when the woman begins to struggle to be the head and act like the head and give instruction and make sure that everything must be, be done according to him, how he wants, he will lose the grace of womanhood. God didn't make you that way. There are exemptions. For instance, if the man is not in the Lord and he has money and all he knows is just to provide money, he doesn't care. That's exemption. Praise God. But when there is God and it's just a matter of weaknesses, this rule holds. I pray for you today. Grace to stand in your position as a woman and as a man. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I say, you know, you know, my, you know, you can call your husband any name. You can call him any name. The question is, how much have you prayed for the man? How much have you asked the Lord? You gave me this man. Change this man for me. It's your duty. Wise women standing as a supplement. Pray. The destiny of their, of their spouses back to divine plan. There are exemptions. There are some men who have sold their heart to the devil. Are we here? And I tell you, at that point, your life is so precious in the, house, in the hand of God to be sacrificed just in the name of marriage. But I tell you, it's just all options. Try all you can do to make sure that you have a home. And by the grace of God, God will reward you for it. Are, are you still here? Let's move on. Let's move on. In the context of my note, it's just like a football club. If you are not in the first 11, who are you? Substitute. Substitute. And the substitute is good. And it's worth being a substitute. So substitute is like an assistant. It's like deputy. Mothers, 
I don't know how you've been surviving. You may be the one providing food, providing money, training the children, working extra hard. God sees it. But I'd like you to know that's why you are there. Whatever role you are playing right now is because the team was not lost. Bring a substitute. A substitute is needed when the team is in trouble. So they come in to make a kind of support and make sure that the team is balanced to win the game. Play your role as a substitute. If my husband is not here, if he's here, what would he have done? Now that he's not here and I'm here, what should I do? Make a call if you can. Take a position if you can. Don't say, ah, everybody knows say my, uh, the man no day when they come. That does not make you responsible. So three things I've said about the woman is what? A supplement? It's a transplanted vessel. And number three is what? You don't want to say it. That's the position God has placed them. And they will not fail it. They will not fail it. In Jesus' mighty name. Now the purpose of the home are this. One, provide compassion to cure the problem of loneliness. You're supposed to work together. You're supposed to relate together. You're supposed to know what you're doing together. Adam took Eve in the garden and he showed him his assignment. Our assignment is to manage this garden for God and to dress the flowers. No secrets. Most men keep secret from their wives. What happens when you are not there tomorrow? No wonder when, God forbid, when the man dies, the family of the man comes to chase away the wife, chase away the children, and take all the property. In fact, they go to kill the man because the man is never with his wife that should protect him. I had a story last two weeks. A young man built a house and the church needed a, a site, one of the church I mentor, and the man was in a dream and God said go give that that uh, house to the church until the church time and the man did it obeyed it in the course of time the church couldn't raise money to roof it the man gathered money roof it set up the altar everything was fine and one of the days the church was praying and a word came that the man wanted to travel and when they travel it will not come he will die. And the wife was there in the meeting of the prayer. And he went home. He didn't tell the pastor. He didn't tell anybody. And he went home and he told the husband the word came today. I didn't tell anybody anything. That you traveled and died. And you didn't come home. And the, the what the man was going to the home to do was very important. Their uncle had died. And it's the one that we stand to bury. And they asked the wife, Darling, this is strange. Are you sure you didn't tell anybody? The man said, No. The woman said, No. I didn't tell anybody. I don't share my family secrets with anybody. But I believe in the power of prayers. And the man stood up and drove and went, go and meet the, went to meet the pastor. And the pastor said, can you stay in this altar for one day? Right there when he was in the altar, God appeared to him and said, if you travel, you will die. The man saw it himself. So when he woke up, he said, so if I have not given this altar to the church, so I would have died. He now called home and he told them, how much will the burial cost? Tell me. They told him. He sent the money. And they told him he was not coming. And one of their uncle got up and got hungry. I said, if the man does not come, the burial will not take place. And another elder replied and said, you see the first son of the man we're burying? The first son is here. The daughter is here. The only thing that they have no money. And the man are giving the money. 
So why should we not bury the man? They started quarreling. In the course of event, the cap of the man fell and there was juju inside there. And the man fell and died. So who saved the man? Who saved the man? You will say God. Is the wife. Men who doesn't listen to their wife dies early. God is so close to the heart of women. Don't import tradition into marriage covenant. God does not understand it. You're supposed to have a relationship. You're supposed to have a feeling. You're supposed to fear God and talk to God before anything. I'm sorry the time is running. The purpose of marriage is to provide help. A help meet. The woman is not a help mate. Neither is he a slave. It's a help meet. It's your supplement. It's your reserve team. Praise God. You are to consult her. You are to inform her. Don't do what you like. In the name of marriage, I am the man. No, you are answerable. Remember, if you value everything outside your marriage, and God forbid, you die, and your wife and children do not know some of your deep secrets and investment, your legacy will be lost. Abraham had 400 slaves. When he died, he had other concubines. The Bible says he gave gifts to the children of his concubine, but he gave the covenant to Isaac. And the Bible says where they buried um, Sarah was where they buried Abraham. That's the model we should follow. Have a plan to your legacy. To your future. Number three, reproduction. The, the concept of that pre are two things. One, the rib was a bright price, and the rib was also an art of God reproductive process. Man is designed to reproduce his nature. Come on, are we here? That's why no woman can pregnant herself. Once a woman is pregnant, Something has, has taken place from the man. Strength. What produces that fertilizes the womb is, is, is one of the virtues that God had deposited in the man. And that's why the name of every child at the end of the day bears the name of the father. Even if the woman is the one that suffered to bring forth the children. Are we here? That is God's intention. And number five, independent. They shall live father and mother, and they shall clean. You don't enter marriage with the opinion of your father and your mother. It can't work. They will mislead you. Remember, God will ask you and call you to accountability. He said, a man and a woman shall live father and mother and shall cleave to themselves. Because they are mature, and they ought to take responsibility. You don't say marriage and be calling your mother. What type of soup do I cook for my husband? No. That is not acceptable. You have an issue with your, your, your spouse. The next minute you be called. You report everything. Except where you need counseling or guidance. We may have a family seminar very shortly. Where we will spend three days. And then we will look at even the children. We will look at. The parents, we look at the grandparents and we, we, we look at raising the family up. Praise God. You need to form your own opinion about matters. You need to have your own testimonies about issues. Are we here? You need to tell us how you had this problem, how you were able to stop at this problem, how you conquered the problem and survived this problem. That is what matters. Supposing your mother doesn't fear God, what would you do? 
They will tie Rapa and visit where he used to visit. And then from there, they start sending arrow against your husband. Against your husband. Or tell this one, put them for soup. Tell this one, put them on that bed. You become a witch. And perhaps those people doing those things might be envying you and envying your children. Whatever God cannot solve, let it wait. Are you see here? Yeah. And of course, number five or six, oneness. Two shall become one. And that is where we have a problem. A divided home is a home where everybody is independent. The woman doesn't know what the man has. The man doesn't know what the woman has. But outsiders knows. That is, I don't know how what to call it. So if I tell my wife how much I have or show my wife my account, she will take it from me? No. You are in business. What does your business worth today? 10 million. Fine. A wise woman will say, darling, maybe you are doing now group container. I am praying that by this time next year, you will be importing a full container and your capital will become 40 million. That's what you are putting in the woman a burden of intercession. But if the woman is worldly, ah, my husband has 10 million. I just saw this bag. Darling, give me 100,000. You will make the man to withdraw. You are not the right woman to know the secret. Praise God. So, sometimes it's the women that causes the men to go inside. I want to cook. So you want him to start breaking the capital so that you can cook. There must be a plan. There must be a structure. There must be a system so that the home will live. Are you thinking when your children grow up and enter private university where school fees will be two million a year? Are you thinking about that? My father told me that a farmer that eats all the CDM is a farmer that has no tomorrow. Are you getting something? God expects you to be one in all things. Manage your money together. Have a joint account together. And make sure it works. Sometimes I beg you, women are very stubborn. They, they are very stubborn. But please make sure that you separate your home money from your business money. Are we here? And let the woman know that this area is no go area. When you have taken loan, let him know that this money is tied to some loan and some stock. Are we here? Make education. Now when you see Papa on the road, stop, I want to buy Papa. Granot, I want to buy Granot. No, have a plan. Organize your expenditures. It's very, very important. So what are actually is family value? Take it and take your note. Family values include the following as I close. Number one, honesty. When there's honesty in the family, honesty. Honesty is truthfulness. Where no one is lying. Something happened this morning. There was an exposure. A man, a Christian, is keeping extramarital affairs with a woman that is married in the place of assignment. And somebody stumbled on the test messages and copied the test message and sent to his wife. Are we here? And the problem had been no money. But the husband was busy borrowing money to meet those extramarital affairs. How will the marriage survive? With children. Where there is no honesty, there cannot be a home. No matter how good the man is, no matter how good the woman is, if the woman is honest and the man is honest, there will be a home. I charge you, one of the value you will build in your home from today is honesty. Can I hear everyone shout honesty? Shout it. You may not have been honest yesterday, but from today, 
What you must you do? Be honest. Tell me, tell somebody by yourself, be honest. Build your home with honesty. Allow your children to grow up with it. Number two, responsibility. A home will be a place where everybody has a contribution to do. All right? Don't kill your spouse. If God has not given you a, a reasonable job as a man, and your wife is the one working and bringing the money, how? Absent tense. The man is not working. The woman is the one working. Growing up and down, bringing money, doing everything, paying rent. And they will still come back and cook. And the man will cross leg. You won't help run school. Children. You won't help get water. You won't help on anything. Remember, this man is supposed to be responsible people. He's supposed to be a marriage, you know, held by responsible people. So when everyone in the, in the family are responsible, I was telling my wife two days ago, I said, uh, if he, Samuel, I'm happy, I'm going to increase their responsibility. Right now, they're the one paying for electricity. And then the, the, the Go TV is fire. I said, they'll be the one recharging it from now. Because the Lord is helping them. Praise God. As moment as they are coming up, you add to their responsibility. Sometimes they take care of my wife. I just come back and say some things. When children are in the home and they don't take any responsibility, they are not responsible. What do you do with your money? Make calls, wear clothes, wear shoes. Your parents are suffering. You are in the house. Family value demand. Everyone in that house, whether you are apprentice or not, must make a contribution. Who washes the car? The man or car wash? Take a responsibility. Let people know that when you were around, this was the things you added. Responsibility is added value, share values. No matter how small a child is, my wife shared uh, Bridget and uh, Ify. If he just came from Asaba, he couldn't read. But right now, we put him in school. You saw him this morning citing John 1, 1 to 14. Praise God. It's compulsory. They must read. We must pray together. And then they will participate. They are now members of the children's team. They have to learn. Now, before you go to school, if you are a boy, wash that car, make sure you sweep the house. Share responsibilities. Stop shouting. Stop getting angry. Tell them what to do. Watch them do it. Guide them do it. Are we here? There's no time. I wanted to talk to you. So that you can live well. What happened to those children when you are spoiled them? You wash their clothes. You dry clean their clothes. You buy their food. When they marry, uh, when I'm in my father's house, I don't suffer. You have already spoiled the children. You didn't prepare them to leave. No matter your size, start preparing them right now to leave. Get down, wash blade. Sometimes some of you have helpmates. You enslave the helpmate. I came by yesterday, if he was in the kitchen, happy sometime too, because of our work. They all enter the kitchen. They wash the plates. We don't leave every work to some children. No. So sometimes you see us look well. We have shared responsibility. We don't try to overwork everybody. No, but at times, you know, mama can always want to do something extra. Like he wake up in the morning and want to cook for everybody. I don't know whether I have to open a free canteen for her. Number three, kindness. Kindness comes before love. So I put it, love and kindness. There must be love. If you love and you don't show kindness, that's not love. That's why we call it in the Bible, loving kindness. That is love that is backed up with sacrifice. Everyone in the home must be willing and ready to make a sacrifice. Make a sacrifice. Don't love people because they deserve your love. I think I said it last Sunday. Love them because 
you are obligated to obey God. If you love me, keep my commandment. John 14 verse 15. You don't do any good to anyone because you love him. You are doing good to yourself. It's just like forgiveness. I was saying this morning. If you don't want to be offended, don't marry. Marriage will attract a lot of offense. Devil will fight. Powers will fight. And then in case of, you know, collaboration and synchronization, let's just blend. There will be a lot of issues. And so there will be a lot of offenses. But please, forgive. Forgive is let go of what you cannot change. When you keep holding things, you will be stagnant. Learn to let go. Number four, integrity. Integrity being in the inside as you are on the outside. Absence of duality. You are not double-faced. You are as real as we figure you. Integrity. Integrity. Be in the inside as you are on the outside. Where you are does not change who you are. You are the same in the house as you are the one where in the place of work. Praise God. I want to warn. Stop stealing, especially children. Some of you go to the port, you steal. If you go to a hostel, you might steal people's food. And that may bring a cause. Stop stealing. You go to school, you steal sweets and biscuits. Stop stealing. You go to the offices, you start changing figure. figure. Stop stealing. Thieves has no integrity. There are disaster waiting to happen. And no thief has a future. They are candidates for sudden death. Let us avoid it. Time will not permit me to continue. But let me talk about occupation. Every member of your family, as you are growing up, must have occupation. Pharaoh asked Joseph to bring his brethren, and they came. And Pharaoh asked them, what are your occupation? And they said, we are horsemen. And they said, okay, take them to Goshen. The field is good for them. If they had no occupation, they will have no allocation. If somebody lives with you for five years, and he leaves you and have nothing to add to it, you've wasted that destiny. Whether it's a house girl, or a house boy, or a service boy, every destiny that passes your way, make sure they have a future. And that's why we're becoming straight in this church. I don't want your men who come to church, run up and down, run up and down, run up and down, greet everyone, and we don't know what you're doing. You'll become a disaster tomorrow. Dominion Gate is not called out for that. We have values. Our children are committed to go to school. If you can't go to school, go and learn work and have an occupation. Are we there? And be disciplined. By the grace of God, one of us will be releasing one of his sons who has served him over time. By the grace of God, this month. That's what we want to see. And we pray. Oh boy, you've served me this well. People will serve you. You will go well. And when you are leaving your master, make sure you also leave honor and dignity. Occupation. A child cannot go to school. Your neighbor's children have graduated from school. Don't make it a force. You must graduate. Tell him to go and learn tailoring. Are we here? Or learn something hairdressing. Give that child an occupation. What's the next one I'm going to talk? Respect. Respect. Family value must be a place where there's Respect. Sometimes when I hear my children 
trying to engage in ungodly conversation, I will intervene. I don't want to hear unbiblical words from their mouth. It can't enter my ear. One of the nights I was hearing a music, I was asking myself, is this music from my house or where? I was in the parlor. So I start going to the doors to put my ear by the door to know where the, the music, music is coming, coming from. from. And, and I, I opened the boys' room. And, and I wake all of them. What, what kind of music are you playing in my house? And they check, one of them was sleeping and his hand had pressed the radio. They check it was radio. They said, that is not music, it's radio. Who put it on? Nobody knew. Praise God. I was, I was surprised because that was strange. You, you must understand the atmosphere that goes around your house. Because the whole essence of all this is, is what do I do to make sure that God is present? And if God can be present to help everyone in the house, we will be able to find out what we do. Phone conversation must be managed. I saw a boy early in the morning. I was told him. He was visiting. And early in the morning, he was talking to a girl for about 35 minutes. And I screamed, see. Caught that phone. It didn't bother me who he was talking to. If a child has no respect for parents, it should be disgraced. Call that phone. I know that person was talking to hurt me. Who are you talking to? He was looking at me. Say, hey, Daddy, my friend. Say, your friend from where? Your mate has gone to work, and you are here early in the morning talking with him. The, the guy has no work. By the way, who gave you money for credit? Okay. I don't think he will do that in his life. Family value, family respect, be a man, be in charge, create values in the home. I have about 20 something things to tell you. Let me stop here. By Wednesday, God helping us, we will complete it. Praise God. Are you here? If we activate all this, you will enjoy marriage. I summarize, the man is God's original agenda and is accountable to God. So the man, if he doesn't love God, to help himself, he must go back and seek God, love God, obey God, do God's will, and stand in God's plan. For his house, the man is a covering over his house. The woman is what? Mothers, who are you? Divine supplement. You quench whatever is wrong. You calm the spirit. So if you are not calming the spirit, you are not playing your role. And of course, I've told you that the purpose of marriage is to cure loneliness, to profile productive life, and of course, to bring oneness, independence, in the life. And then we begin to look at types of family values. Look at honesty and the likes. That is how far we can go today. I pray for you as we close. Rise to your feet. I don't know where you are missing it. Can you say God? Lord, help me. How many of you need God's help? Based on what you have heard, can you go ahead and say, God, I need your help. Wherever I have missed it, I come to you for help. Help me. I am not sending you home to go and start quarreling. Do you hear what the pastor said? Do you see all you have been doing to me in this house? That's not the game of this message. The game of this message, you pick your own. Everybody has picked their own. Praise God. Are we here? Everybody has picked their home and just walk with your own. Lift your hands and begin to honor God. Honor him. Honor him. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided 
to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning you lift your hands we are going to do warfare on this message on Wednesday and we are going to take communion for the families time will not permit us to do all this I want you to put Psalm 68 and verse 19 on the screen I have about 10 decrees to make on families Father thank you for stepping into our family by reminding us about your original intention for our home. Help me to take responsibility. Help me to occupy my place as you have ordained and appointed. Lord, do not allow me to fail you. Do not allow my children to be wasted in my eyes. Make me a responsible mother, a responsible father, a responsible guide help me to be whom you have made me to be lord thank you bless my home with your presence step back, back into, into my, my home. home come into, into my home, home. Take, take your place take your place i will allow you to take your place in my home be the lord of my home be the god of my home be the guidance in my home and I know you will supply every need of my home to the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, as I made these declarations on you and myself, let your enemy be, al be allowed and be powerful. As the Lord steps into your house from today, every lost value shall be redeemed. Every lost family cultures shall be restored. The enemy standing between you and your spouse has changed the way. The power attacking and bewitching your children are disconnected from you. Are disconnected from your house. Are disconnected from your family. Several families are wounded by reasons of poverty. From today, every lack and want in your family has changed the way in the name of Jesus. I therefore declare as follows. From today, your family shall encounter daily favor. Can I hear a living amen? Can I hear a living amen? Daily connections, daily relevance, daily mercies, in the name of Jesus, your family shall experience daily resolve, daily peace, daily joy, daily protection, in the name of Jesus. The benefit of marriage, the benefit of sonship, shall never elude your family. You will enjoy daily benefits. Your children shall enjoy daily benefits. In the name of Jesus, by the grace of God, your family shall enjoy added values. Daily profits, daily attention, 
Jesus mighty name we have prayed. 